This sure did take a long time. It was about a year and a half in the making, but blood oxygen level checking is finally coming back to the Apple Watch as of today. And it's kind of hilarious how Apple was able to brought it back. You think they'd reach a settlement? You think they'd come to some kind of agreement with Massimo? Nope, uh, Apple just found a way to do a little trolling, if you will. Let's begin. So just in case you missed the story, back on the Apple Watch Series 6, which came out in 2020, Apple introduced blood oxygen level checking. So if you bought a Series 6 or later, you could just figure out what percentage of your blood had like a healthy amount of oxygen in it. I never found it particularly useful. Pretty much all my checks were always 97, 98, 99, or even 100%. But I guess for some people out there, maybe you're climbing an altitude or maybe you're going on a big hike, it could be useful to some. But then Massimo enters the picture and they sued Apple for IP infringement because Massimo claims they have a way of checking blood oxygen levels that Apple stole and Massimo claimed to own the patent on it. And of course, Apple fought against the lawsuit claiming that it didn't infringe, but it went to court. And while Apple has a very good legal team, Massimo technically was able to prove that they owned some of the technology or at least some of the techniques that Apple was using and and surprisingly won on a couple of counts, which meant basically a year and a half ago, Apple was no longer allowed to use the blood oxygen level checking, at least in the format that they had implemented it for brand new Apple Watches, which meant that from that date on, if you bought an Apple Watch, even though it has the hardware to check your blood oxygen levels, it straight up can't check it anymore. It was just kind of software turned off. They didn't really do anything at the factory level to stop the Apple Watch from being capable of checking your blood oxygen levels, but it was kind of weird that a smaller company like that could actually put Apple in their place. And of course, Apple fought against this and we hadn't really heard back from the lawsuit and the infringement since then. Until today, now Apple has found a way around it, which is kind of weird. So essentially, they didn't reach a settlement or anything like that. All that really happened is Apple found a loophole, essentially, to get out of this patent infringement, which now involves the data collection of your blood being done on the Apple Watch, but then all of that data is immediately sent to your iPhone now, and then your iPhone is what assembles that data and gives you an actual blood oxygen level percentage, which can now be viewed in the health app. So I guess because it's technically not processed and encoded on the Apple Watch, this gets around the patent infringement, which is just insane. It's just kind of a ridiculous solution. All it means now, I guess, it's slightly different than before. It just means like if you were on the go and you didn't have your iPhone on you, your Apple Watch will not be able to display your blood oxygen level. The only way you can actually view the percentage now is through your iPhone. And I find this a hilarious solution personally that this actually works and holds up. But yeah, all it requires is the latest public release on your Apple Watch and your iPhone. But if you had an older Apple Watch, like if you bought one before this lawsuit took place, then nothing really changes for you. You're still able to check blood oxygen levels on the Apple Watch. Like, obviously, that is still the superior way of checking the levels. This roundabout solution is obviously better than nothing, but definitely not as good as it used to be. But just to be clear, like, yeah, it doesn't retroactively make it harder for existing Apple Watches. And it just goes to show you how weird patent law and copyright law can be. If you bought an Apple Watch before that time, you're unaffected, you're fine. But if you bought an Apple Watch after they removed that blood oxygen level checking within the software, then you just got to check it on your phone now. And I guess that is the temporary solution until a true settlement is made. But honestly, I don't find the feature that useful, nor do I know that many people that actually utilize it. So I wouldn't be surprised if the vast majority of people out there have no idea that this feature comes back. And I mainly wanted to highlight it in today's video just because the whole scenario, the whole circumstance that led to this decision is so hilarious to me. It's not so much about the feature, like I'm still rocking my Series 5 ceramic. It doesn't have blood oxygen level checking has no impact on me, but knowing that a much smaller health company was able to try to get the Apple Watch straight up banned from being sold in the US, then Apple found a loophole and just had to remove one feature and now found a way to bring it back through encoding all of this data on your iPhone instead of on the Apple Watch. Just a crazy chain of events in my opinion. But how do you guys feel about Apple's solution? Do you think this is a happy medium? Do you think Massimo should just back down and we can go back to being able to check our levels straight off the watch? 
watch, feel free to let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And thank you to everybody supporting this channel directly. It seriously helps us out a ton, as does just watching these videos. So thanks again. Have an excellent rest of your day.